Good morning and a warm welcome to Christ Church Daily Reflections. My name is Roger Lutrot and I would like to focus uh, today on John chapter 19 verses 37. I read as follows. Pilate asked, are you a king? Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into this world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize what I say is the truth. What is truth? Pilate asked. This is a very pertinent question asked by Pontius Pilate, a Roman governor before whom Jesus stood at his trial prior to his crucifixion. In the information age in which we live, we are bombarded on all sides with a huge amount of information, claims and counterclaims competing for our attention. I would like to reflect on three main characteristics of the truth, which I hope will be a blessing to you today. I begin with what it is not. First, the truth is not relative. Now by relative, what I mean is the belief that the truth is not always the same, but it depends on things such as culture, historical context, or society. Pilate posed the question to Jesus, what is truth? In his way of thinking, the truth is whatever the majority of people agree with, or whatever helps advance a person's personal power or political goals. The danger of such a relative approach to the truth is that it is a moving feast. The truth is whatever feels right at the time, and this cannot be the standard for our moral behavior. In fact, this is contrary to Psalm 119, verses 89, which states that your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. What then is truth? This brings me to my second point, which is God's word is truth. Prior to Jesus' crucifixion, he prayed to his father for his disciples as follows. Sanctify them through your word. Your word is truth. God's word is the ultimate truth. In this season of the pandemic, embracing God's word is crucial to help us discern truth from error. Thirdly, Jesus is the truth. Jesus made one of the boldest statements which has ever been made in the history of mankind by any person. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, as the truth, Jesus himself is the reality of all God's promises. He is God's word made flesh who came to dwell amongst us. Many stumble at this statement as they would rather embrace their relative standard of truth or some other form of truth to their own personal advantage. What then does all this mean for us today? Well, in these uncertain times, I have found great deal of security in the truth of God's word. Jesus said, the words 
that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. Spend time reading his words daily and meditating on it. Believing and receiving the promises contained in it for your lives personally. They are God's message of love to you personally. They are effective and life transformative. So when the psalmist says in Psalm, 100, uh, Psalm 91 verse 4 that his truth will be your shield and buckler, that is exactly what it means. It means God's protection is available to you personally. It is to be believed and received for it to be effective. You cannot be passive about this and expect the benefits of this promise. We do the word as well as hear the word. Otherwise, we are not taking possession of what is ours. We are not treading out the land. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It is the knowledge of the truth that sets us free. This is more than an intellectual exercise of taking in information about the truth. But it is rather about receiving the truth of God's word by faith in our hearts. The song which I have chosen is a hymn by Priscilla Owens entitled, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? The chorus speaks about being grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love, and that, and that <coughs> is the security we have when we are rooted in God's word, which is the truth. We have an anchor that keep the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word today. I pray for everyone listening to me that they will grasp hold of your truth, the truth of your word, which will set them free. I pray that your truth will permeate their hearts. I pray that your truth will drive away any diseases in their bodies. I pray that your truth will be the comfort, will be a source of comfort for those who are grieving. I pray that your truth will bring joy to the hearts of the downcast. I pray that your truth will provide for those who are in need. I pray that, Lord, your, you will bring encouragement to the hearts of those listening to me today. Thank you, Lord, that your word is indeed truth. It is spirit and it is life to our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day.